Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into a video discussing the March 1st Lego Harry Potter wave including the brand new poly bag that I was able to pick up from Toys R Us. I am disappointed by this wave. I was on such a huge high for Harry Potter from the Hogwarts Legacy video game which I played through on my second channel. Loved it so much. I was just so immersed in the world of Harry Potter and I was loving it so much that I was able to get the sets a little bit early from Walmart. I built them, and as I'm building them, I'm just like, oh, I wish this was from the game. It would have been perfect. It would have been just a little bit released after the game's launch. And then the banners. Oh, I'm beyond disappointed about the banners. You'll hear why in a bit. I'll talk about how I miss the book so much in comparison. The figures here are immaculate. I will say, you go through here. And I love them all. I think they've done an excellent job across the board with all, I guess, technically seven of the sets here that we're going to look at quickly. It's not one of the long review compilation videos that I've done in the past. I just want to look at these briefly. I know that a lot of other people have too. But I want to look at them from the perspective of wishing these were Hogwarts Legacy sets. And then also just discussing those banners. Anyways, let's go ahead. Let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy first. Because I'm going to talk about that pretty much throughout the entire video. So we're going to start and talk about this set first. This is set number 76413, the Hogwarts Room of Requirement, retailing for $49.99 USD or $64.99 Canadian. Now, this set here is one of the very first fully-fledged Deathly Hollow sets we've gotten for the theme since 2018. Of course, we had the Ministry and a little bit of the Advent Calendar, but this is completely from that film. The name itself it is actually technically already been used before for another room of requirement, but the room changes its appearance, obviously, which leads me into why I want to talk about this set. So now I actually built this set second, and this is when it hit me. This should have been a Hogwarts Legacy set. I saw this scroll up here, and I immediately thought, if you've played the game, I thought that this could easily be a field guide page that you find around the entire Hogwarts uh, grounds and then Hogsmeade and the greater area around it and I'm just like why isn't this a Hogwarts legacy set because the room of requirement is actually a very big part of the game if you played it eventually through the story you unlock the ability to use the room of requirement customize it and and create it however you want and while the game, of course, took inspiration from the films in terms of its aesthetics, you could see here, like, look at that, that the door, it's gorgeous. I love that play feature there and how that can open up. But even on to the inside here, it's messy, just like how you first find it in the game. And you can see what you got to do here is you, if you remove the top sections, you can actually open it up and make it bigger. And I just think that this is like, it's gorgeous. I love all the torches and the pillars, the stickers, and all the different clutter here. Everything piled up. You've got a Cornish pixie up there. You've got a physical Cornish pixie. Again, some incredible decorations. And I just think, like, if you could just, you know, take this pile here, and maybe this could have been, like, the potion stands or the different herbology tables, and you just unstack them, and you could decorate your room of requirement however you want. Again, please don't misunderstand me. I love this set in terms of it being a Deathly Hollow set, but even just as an expansion to the greater Hogwarts castle system that we've gotten, because again, it gives us this angles here, which is something that people have complained about where you just make this big tan wall. And I like the fire serpent as well, how you have the ability to go and remove the different parts and attach it to all these different spots. I, I think that's great. And again, the, the design here, like these little archways and everything, the Hogwarts stickers, it's all gorgeous. Again, even coming back over here to this part, like this is completely removable. And I think that's gorgeous, the side of that. And you can remove this in two different parts and you've got uh, the sink there. And I think that overall, obviously the set is great, but then you've got these great figures here, getting the gray lady for the first time, this outfit for Harry, for the very first time, back with the original Deathly Hallows sets, they all had uniforms for the students. So it's great to see that there. Got that Hermione outfit technically from Dimensions. We've got Lucius there. We've got Draco with that new outfit. Blaze looks great there with the new skin color. And then here with their second faces, like they're great minifigures. And it makes for a fantastic set, I think. 
Now on to the banners. Each of these retail for $34.99 USD or $44.99 Canadian. And minifigure wise, wow, excellent. Like incredible, ton of new characters here we've never gotten, new outfits and everything. We'll look at them in a bit. But then the banners, I really don't like them. Maybe it's because we were spoiled with the books and I love the books. Do they look great here on the outside with these brand new pieces and everything there for the different crests and those incredible parts being used from the Disney books with the great printing on it that's one giant piece? Yeah, they look pretty cool. They've even got the little hangers there so you can hang them on a wall. I think that's a very interesting concept. You know, it makes them stand out amongst the books. But here's the thing. You might be wondering how they're standing up and I'll show you. Well... They're actually all on top of a ton of minifigure plates there for minifigure series because, well, besides hanging them, the only other way to display them is to have them lying down, at least for the exterior. Unlike the books, you can't really, you know, put these anywhere besides a wall unless you construct some sort of stand like I've done here. That's your only option. Which, for someone like myself that doesn't leave a lot of choices of how I'm going to display these. The only thing that I can do right now, because I don't have too much wall space, is remove all of those here. And I just had them all sitting like this on top of each other. And that's not very visually appealing. It's not even from the sides, unlike the books. Like, if you look at them here and I continue to spin them around... You'll notice up there that uh, depending on how you place them, it's very easy here, and you just tip them a little bit, those incredible 3D images here that move and reveal all these different things, they slide on out. So sometimes, you know, maybe, again, it's because I'm having them stand like that, but just the simplest little movements, it falls out. And to me, that's just a design flaw. Because how easy would it have been for them to just put a little bit more pieces there or something to actually hold that in better? Sometimes they'll fall out like that. You could see just just by moving it a little bit here, it's it's falling out. Look at this. I don't like that. All right, I'm going to try and go as quickly as I can through this. This is the Gryffindor one here. And what you do is you open it up just like this, and then you lift on up, and you can pose them like this. Now, again, an idea that I had with, I wish that I could be able to actually display it, would be, it would be nice if these bits here, the bottom banner parts, if they could fold down. Um, I don't know. I just think that would add to the displayability of these. Anyways, though, um, here you go. You could see they're so detailed like this is just such a cool concept that they've brought back after all these years uh, for lego harry potter and i'm very happy about that you've got a ton of little hidden things here uh, that you're meant to actually remove and set up uh, just like the uh, actual books which i think is really cool that they've thought all of this through all of the little decorations and every thing here they all have a specific little spot uh you're gonna see throughout a couple of these they actually reference those books right there on the different bookshelves which i think is a lot of fun you've even got a little crest up there that is built i like the uh different windows there you could see i i'm not sure maybe that's meant to be buckbeak or a thestral i think the wings look a little pointed but uh even that window that's a giant sticker there serious in the fireplace it's a pretty good one. Here's the Hufflepuff banner, uh, my personal favorite, which by the way, we've got those new pieces. I think I've mentioned that already here, but uh, you open it on up here, you remove the chest, this little uh, greenery thing there, and you've got this couch, this pumpkin, this table that sits inside there in the middle, and you've even got a little watering can there. All right, anyways, with this set, what's neat about this is the Hufflepuff common room actually was never designed. You never saw it in the films. And for the first time with Hogwarts Legacy, the designers for the game got to fully design it. And it feels cozy. You get that sort of 
feel, I think, from this. Maybe it's the dark yellow and everything. It feels like it from the game, and I think that's incredible. Uh, just with everything going on here, I love all the references, all the little nifflers, all the plants growing. Again, you've got a book there. You've got Newt's Commander there in a picture. And then this is the 3D image. Looks cool. I love the Quidditch there in the back. All right, here we have the Slytherin banner. Open it on up. Remove the couch. This bit here, the stairs. What you do is you take that and you put it over uh, there if it decides to connect. There we go. I'm going to remove this, just show this to you now. Uh, it looks great. I love how you're underwater there. I think they capture that so well. I love the uh, Salazar Slytherin there with the snake. Tom Riddle was there at the bottom. Very cool. I did that so that I can pop those little bits out and that as well. Anyways, slide this back on in there's one other thing here and that is the table there that you can remove very easily sits inside there again atmosphere wise i think they capture it quite well ton of stickers which i i, I don't mind stickers i love the extra detail and everything you've got the staircase which is a cool concept but it leads to nothing. Wish that was blacked out or we got this cool sticker like the Gryffindor one. I think that's kind of disappointing. Got a ton of really cool references, including uh, one of the other Hogwarts moments books there, which is awesome. All right, here is the Ravenclaw banner here. And we're going to open it on up here and remove the two chairs there. And you've got these really cool uh big lights there i like how they've managed to fit that inside of the banners i think that's pretty cool move that over a bit there and uh yeah that's it for removing things there's there's nothing else no hidden table or something in a windowsill but i like the references to the other books and uh, you could see some more books down below and uh, this is what the 3D image looks like. You saw that a bit before. Uh, I will say my absolute favorite thing about this, and I kind of wish that it was something the other sets did, is right here, we've actually got a physical book piece, not a print, not a sticker. It is a physical book piece there of the Defense Against the Dark Arts book. And I love that. I wish that all the other textbooks came here from the past sets that i've been talking so much about i think getting this in purple sand green whatever all those other colors would have been so so cool so let's compare here shall we this is the potions classroom and then this is the slytherin common room we're going to open the both up both of them come with three minifigures so don't compare them that i'm not even going to talk about the price i just want to talk about the actual build and what you get here this was one of the ones that i remember being very dynamic so you get a, a ton of stickers there you could see them all and then all this is compacted in here all these little spots they've thought it all through how to make sure that those builds fit inside and then here you go, you open it on up. All right, so here you go, you put the table there, you open up the blackboard, you've got this comfy little chair, and then all of these little potions here you put onto the tables and you're good to go there. And maybe you wanna put that over there. I don't know, you can put them in the other room if you want, do different things. But then this one, ready, we're gonna open it up. And this one is, again, one of the more well-designed ones because it allows you to actually have the table here. Pop it on out. I, I don't know. I think that this looks so detailed. All of these incredible stickers. Look at the wall full of potions. Yes, that wall does move. These stickers don't move. But this doorway, you can walk through and you could set up, if you want, on the other side here, a another room versus over here, you walk into nothing and that just feels very incomplete again this allows you to make it feel very you know connected and what's great about these books as well they could connect to the other books these banners banners don't connect to the other banners you know what the banners do have going for them is the figures i cannot express how much i love the idea of these figures the fact that there are three separate types of figures in each of the sets being one in the house's sweater, which we've never gotten for some of them, and then robes, and then also just the jackets and the ties, some open, some closed. 
phenomenal new skin colors here ton of hair pieces here some new colors as well for the hair excellent in terms of the figures you could swap them around make your own figures for your different houses like i love that so much here but then going back to hogwarts legacy if they followed the same pattern that the books did one professor st two students we could have been getting the professors from hogwarts legacy and then just make your own students here or giving us the sort of side characters from the game in these banners or better yet looking at the banners and i look at how i have the books here all together i would have loved to get a dark red book a dark green book a dark blue book and the dark yellow book to add to that there so that i can have them all next to each other they would look so great having the different symbols on the spine of the books oh, it would have been so great if these were the books instead that would have been ideal hogwarts legacy common room books all right, let's talk about the positive of this wave, shall we? This is set number 76420, the Tri-Wizard Tournament, the Black Lake set, retailing for $44.99 USD or $59.99 Canadian. This is a remake of a set that people have been waiting and begging for for so, so long, and they hit it out of the park with this set. I'm blown away. Something you can do here is you can remove the uh, top part here and have just the underwater section on its own. Like this is just so cool. The fact that they're on these little rubber pieces as well so they can sort of bob up and down. That's just so cool. The colors here, the teal, the sand green, and even just the bright green. Also those rock pieces here recolored in dark blue look so, so cool. I love this part. This build too is really great here. I like the angles there for the roof and everything they've got going on. You can actually turn the clock to show that time is progressing during this trial here. You've got a ladder going on up with some like hot tea, some of the gillyweed there. Really great. But then down below is a really cool play feature. But there's one more thing here, a little play feature. If I turn this around really carefully, you could see this little thing there. All you do is you push down on it and it forces them to dive on in and start the challenge. And then you've got this stellar batch of minifigures, each of them coming with a brand new minifigure headpiece, a couple new torsos here, and then they've got, again, because they're new heads, they've got incredible second faces. And of course here we've got the shark head that's included as well for Victor Crumb and like look at the gills there on Harry, those faces there and like all the parts being used here for the mer person is great from video. You've even got here the Grindy Loy, incredible batch of minifigures. Oh yeah, there's also this little rowboat included. And then the final set that we're going to look at is the brand new poly bag that launched on March the 1st. This is set number 30651. The Quidditch practice set retailing for $4.99 USD or $5.99 Canadian. I was able to pick this up from Toys R Us. And I love this idea. It's sort of a forced perspective where you could have Cho here chasing the snitch. But like she's up really high up and you've got the little micro Quidditch pitch down below. I think that's really fun. Again, you could have her chasing it there. So you spin this around. You got to sort of bend the legs enough and have her tilted up enough so that she doesn't hit anything. But that is a really, really fun little play feature there. And just removing all that so you can get a better look at the actual Quidditch pitch. It looks awesome here. I think that this is such a small, simple build, but they really captured it so well. And with last year's Hogwarts poly bag as well, the micro scale, I think this looks really cute next to each other. If you didn't know, I've got a video actually buying a ton of these and building them up. You should check that linked up here at the top if you're interested. Pretty cool to have the golden snitch here at a cheap set since the cheapest way before would have been the first Harry Potter minifigure series. But the Cho Chang figure here in the Quidditch robes is awesome because again, speaking of cheap ways to get different harry potter items the robes here that are being used for cho only appeared in diagon alley i thought that they would have updated the logos here sort of like the 
crest there on the Gryffindor robes. But then I went and I looked at the Ravenclaw robes, and they've actually got the old classic symbol there. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but regardless, it's great to have this torso here in such a cheap set. And you get the new Cho Chang face there with the new skin color. Incredible. Anyways, everyone, that is my review my thoughts on this wave of harry potter sets for march the first look i think i'm being a bit hard on these and a bit negative with a couple of different things like the banners obviously like if you compare it to like you know the art sets the only way to display those are to hang them as well it's just something this small i and and again i think it's because i'm comparing them to the books how could i not I, i'm just a little sad about that and again because i've just been so immersed in hogwarts legacy i wish that we got sets for that and i did a video talking about how i'm disappointed that lego isn't doing things from video games and this is a perfect example and it would be so easy to translate these sets the banners the rumor requirement all these different things it's right there and it's just it's always going to be a missed opportunity unfortunately but i'd love to hear your thoughts on this what do you think of it be sure to subscribe turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on future lego harry potter set news interviews i'll link a couple videos here at the end if you want to check those out hope you guys did enjoy the video hope you all have a great day we'll see you all in the next one